Hi, this is Jackie Murray. I'm with Ask a Tech Teacher. I'm your guide through the Structured Learning Technology Curriculum. This one for first grade, um, it's 32 lessons. We're on lesson 15 right now. This is an introduction to spreadsheets. So with first graders, it, it is pre-spreadsheets. We're not really going to teach them spreadsheets are for turning numbers into information. We're not doing that in first grade. We merely want them to get used to the idea that spreadsheets are, are versatile. Are, they can use them for things, just like with keyboarding. We don't try to teach touch typing until fourth grade. We don't even try to keep, teach keyboarding until second grade, but first grade, we're doing pre-keyboarding. Just get them used to the idea that they have eight fingers, they have a couple thumbs, the fingers move around, get to different keys, those types of things. Posture is important, but we're not really dwelling on anything yet to, with, with the goal of speed and accuracy in keyboarding. So spreadsheets, we're introducing it to get them thinking about some basic tools available in spreadsheets, do a project in them so they have a really good feeling about spreadsheets when they move forward. A lot of new words and you want to use all of these because you want them to get used to it. Every year if you're using the structured learning curriculum they're going to be doing a project in spreadsheets. Next year it's still kind of pre-spreadsheets but third grade they're doing a um, numbers crunching sort of um, sorting through data project. So you've got two years. You've got two projects, a couple projects, whatever amount, but you've got two years to get them through that. They will be ready. You're going to introduce it this year. Next year they're going to go, I've never seen that before. You're going to remind them they did and what they did and they're going to, yeah, I, I remember that. They're going to do much, use much of the same tools, a few new ones. They're going to be comfortable by third grade. So that's all we're starting with, but it's important you use all the right words. It's um, um, domain-specific vocabulary, and you want them used to these. They probably maybe use these in math also. So to prepare for class, you might talk to your grade level team, see which of these words they use in math so you can show students the tie-in. I think most of the problem solving is pretty standard. Filling in the wrong color, that, that'll be different for spreadsheets. So you just show them they fill over with a different color. It's that simple. The spreadsheets are new. They didn't do them in kindergarten. Formatting cells, decoding information, this is all new for first graders. So you, you judge how fast, how slow you do. The, this lesson gives you three projects you can do. Four, what is it? Four projects, got it. So you can pick one or more, whatever you have time for. So yes, like I said, talk to your grade level team. Um, and, and be aware, while this lesson does include projects you can use, if you're talking about birds in class, then find a, a, a project, a shape like this that is a bird. So it ties into what they're doing. Paint by numbers, same thing if you're talking about um, wagon trains, find a wagon and, and create this. These are very easy for you to create. You can even have your fifth graders create it because it's very easy. Oh, we'll get back to that in a minute. Okay, so let's see. So keyboarding, they're still working on keyboarding. They're working on all the keys now, not just any of them, but I don't think that was an issue in this first grade anyway. And then introduce your your, let students know they're going to be using spreadsheets. Let them know what the spreadsheet is. It's something they've probably seen their older siblings or their mom and dad use. You're going to be drawing in it. So give them that sort of a full introduction mm -hmm. to it. So they are excited. This is something I can go home and say, hey mom, I used Excel in class. Or I used Google Spreadsheets. Um, drawing in spreadsheets is a, is a little different but it's a well accepted practice and here's a quote from a Japanese artist who loves drawing in Excel and he made this quote there's a link if you want to see some of his work so uh, there, there's a few reasons why drawing in Excel is a, is a really good idea we list them here you can point these out to students and then here are the basic tools they will be using for drawing um, I maybe not this so much maybe not text or 
font sizes and stuff, but paint bucket, the toolbar, not necessarily those tools, but just the fact that there is that toolbar, columns and rows and cells, and then a shape if you choose that project. Only one of the projects has adding shapes. So, all right, so go over them, point them out to students, tell them next year you're going to ask them to point them out to their classmates, and then decide which project you want to start on. This is a coloring book. So you'll, you'll want to have this prepared and then the students color in it using whatever colors they choose. They have it in their workbook, their student workbook. So they have one they can use if you want them to do this rather than pushing out a copy to them. Now this is an image. It's not a spreadsheet. So you lose a little bit of what's going on there. You'd have to paint it. So it doesn't work that well. So you, you decide. It's, it's probably better to come up with this and then push it out as a spreadsheet sheet, worksheet to students that they then open up. And then you get to teach them that skill. And then they fill them in using those tools you talked about, the paint bucket and the cells, and then painting over by just pouring a different color on top of it. So it's a simple coloring book program. Paint by numbers. You're going to push out a spreadsheet like this that has the letters in there telling them what color to use. And then they're going to fill it in with that color. This is the sun, this is the um, butterfly, and theirs is, they have one there too, but once again, it, it's an image. It's not this uh, spreadsheet, so you'd have to create your own. And um, freehand drawing, just have them draw. And this is easy to tie in with whatever they're doing in class. So ask them to draw a citizen or draw a bird or whatever they're studying in class, a rainforest tree, and color, use the right colors and shape it as well as possible. These are oblongs rather than squares. You can easily change the cells to be squares, but it's probably it's a little advanced for first graders. We really don't cover that till I think second grade when they learn how to turn it into squares. So, but if, if you want to see how to do that, don't know how to turn it into squares, let me know. Put a note on our forum and, and I'll either put, upload a video so you can see how or I'll explain it. it. It's not really very hard. Okay, so they draw here and this is where they can add a shape if you want. So once they've made their drawing, they can go here and add a shape. This depends upon your group. It's one extra skill, a good skill for them to know, but uh, you decide if this is enough or if you want them to add some shapes. Then the last one is the hidden picture. So you're giving them these cells to color a certain color, whatever that is, and you're asking them to just open a spreadsheet and use and color the cells according to this legend. And that's all they're going to do. Here's the instructions over here. And warn them, if you figure out what it is as you're coloring, don't tell anyone. And then eventually they'll see this is what they've drawn. And they're going to put a little animal in there and their name down at the bottom. So that's this is the hidden picture. All of these take about a half an hour, maybe less, maybe more. All of them can be done in small groups as pairs or individually. That's really about it. Let's see. Um, the let's see, class exit ticket students complete. Paint you've posted, but instead of code, oh, it's coded by their name with a legend telling them. That's kind of cool. This is a fun project. So you're going to put this on the class screen. You're going to have a picture, a paint by numbers picture up there. But instead of coding by color, you're going to code it by their name, and their name will be coded to a color. So then they'll fill in. The square with their name in it and eventually a picture will come up. It'll be the class picture based on all the student names. So that's a really good one. All right. I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else in here. All right, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to help you. Um, otherwise, have a great week. I'll see you in a week. Bye.